Job creation is a major challenge for the African continent. The total African labor force is expected to reach 1 billion by 2030. Young people are particularly affected by unemployment. It is estimated that one third of young people can't currently find work. Because of a rapidly growing population, the situation is especially acute in East Africa. Ethiopia alone receives an additional 2 million new entrants into the job market every single year, while DRC, Tanzania, Kenya and Uganda will have to cope with more than 1 million new entrants. This puts tremendous pressure on the economies of East Africa, requiring the creation of an additional 700,000 jobs every single month. Whose responsibility is it to solve this problem? Governments across the region have set ambitious targets for job creation. In Kenya, for instance, the government aims to create more than 450,000 manufacturing jobs by 2025. Yet, according to a recent Afrobarometer survey, over 70% of Africans believe that their governments have not done well in creating the right conditions for a more vibrant labor market. In any case, governments alone cannot deliver the necessary job creation. The private sector will need to take a lead. This is where the African Continental Free Trade Area comes in. The Economic Commission for Africa estimates that the Continental Free Trade Area will help create up to 2 million new jobs in East Africa, particularly in the manufacturing, agro-processing and textile sectors. It will boost regional trade by more than 1 billion US dollars. And let's not forget the contribution of the service sector. It already accounts for around 55% of the regional economy. A lot of new opportunities will open up in tradable services like tourism, ICT and finance. A second contribution of the continental free trade area is the free movement protocol. There are a lot of unemployed skilled people across the continent. In East Africa, one in five people with secondary or university level education are currently without a job. Yet at the same time, many countries are suffering from serious shortages of qualified employees. The implementation of the free movement protocol will allow young people to move to where there is a need for their skills and talents. A third area where the continental free trade area will help young people is by providing them opportunities to establish new businesses. African youth are among the most enterprising in the world. A 2013 Gallup survey showed that more than one in three Africans plan to start up a business over the next 12 months. In Uganda, that figure rises to two out of every three people, making it one of the most entrepreneurial places in the world. The continental free trade area will give young entrepreneurs access to a much larger, vibrant continental market, allowing young people to set up new businesses and tap into the growing demand for made-in-Africa goods and services. Young people deserve better opportunities and a brighter future. The continental free trade area will put us on the right track to provide those opportunities. So what is the AFCFTA? Africa currently consists of 55 fragmented markets, markets that are also amongst the fastest growing economies in the world. Yet the AFCFTA is an African solution for supporting industrial development, creating new business opportunities, generating jobs, and reducing poverty. An opinion poll carried out in November 2018 by the Rockefeller Foundation of over 2,000 citizens across the continent confirmed that an impressive 77% of Africans believe that the Continental Free Trade Area Agreement represented an important step forward. But what does this agreement mean in practice and how will it affect us? The first thing to point out is, well, it isn't simply a free trade agreement, it's actually much more than that. It's about establishing a unified continental market, including the free movement of labor and investment. Let's focus on three major benefits of the continental free trade area. Africa is a big continent. You could fit the US, China and Europe into the continent and still have space to spare. But in economic terms, individual countries are still very small. 
Take Rwanda, for instance. It's one of the fastest growing economies in the world, but in terms of size, it ranks number 143rd out of 193 economies in the world. This matters because small economies often struggle to attract the much needed investments. Collectively, the story is very different. The African continent, all 54 economies together, have a collective GDP of 2.5 trillion US dollars. That makes it the eighth largest economy in the world, just behind India. And with 1.2 billion potential customers, it makes the continent much more attractive to investment, both from within and from outside the continent. This will encourage business people to make the investments necessary to sustain economic growth and create the job opportunities the continent badly needs. A second argument in favor of the continental free trade area is that it includes a protocol on the free movement of people. This matters because at present, traveling between African countries for Africans currently can be very challenging. Visas, expensive air tickets, custom clearances and border controls make it difficult to travel for pleasure and even more difficult to do business across borders. Currently, there are a lot of trained and skilled people across the continent coming out of schools, universities and colleges who cannot find work. If free movement is endorsed, people will be able to use their talents anywhere in the continent where there is demand for those talents. The continent will be your oyster. A third powerful argument in favor of the continental free trade area is that it will increase trade between African countries. Less than one-fifth of all exports are currently from one African country to another. Take Kenya for instance, the largest economy in the East African community. Each year the country exports 1 billion US dollars to Europe and around 500 million US dollars to the US worth of products. Kenya's total export amounts to 6 billion US dollars. How much do you think Kenya exports to its neighbor Ethiopia? 1 billion US dollar? 500 million US dollars? 200 million US dollars? No. In 2017, it exported just 69 million US dollars to Ethiopia. Why? One of the main reasons is the high level of trade taxes. The Continental Free Trade Area Agreement is proposing to remove trade taxes on at least 90% of all trade between African countries. That will provide a big incentive to regional trade. The Economy Commission for Africa estimates that in Eastern Africa, the Continental Free Trade Area could boost regional trade by nearly 1 billion US dollars. And the principal sectors that would benefit would be precisely the ones that create much employment like light manufacturing, processed foods and textiles, creating as many as 2 million new jobs. African economies will find it hard to become strong economies unless they trade more among each other. There is an old Swahili saying that states, Umoja ni nguvu, utengano ni udaifu. United we stand, divided we fall.